Praise God for all the children. Thank you, girls. Wonderful. God has been good to us. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is new for me. I've never, I've never said these words before that I'm going to do a sermon series. Amen? There you go. I'm going to do a sermon series on the man that God uses. Probably take up today and some of October. The man that God uses. We're going to start out with a character of the man that God uses. Character is who you are when no one is looking. And what you're willing to stand for when somebody is looking. <coughs> and who you're striving to be. And what you can be. And who you can be trusted with. Let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you. God, uh, you established man. You brought a woman to come along beside him, God. You said it's not good that man should be alone. So right now, we want to thank you for every woman upon the face of this earth that you blessed man with. We thank you, God, for an opportunity to share what your word of God says about men. And God, if we don't get right as men, as fathers, as brothers, as sons, God, nothing's going to work right in this nation or in our families or in this church. So help us, God. By the sake that a lot of murdering people after every man that's here, he's going to be whispering to them today to not obey your word, to not commit to what your word says. We recognize, God, that he hates us. We recognize that he wants us dead. So, Father, again, by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, him and any demonic spirit that he may bring in here today, we ask that it be pushed right out of the way and not allowed. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask all these things. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. Hebrews 4.13, I'm going to read it in the King James first, and then I'll read what it says in the Billy Graham New Living Translation. Hebrews 4.13 said, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. In the Billy Graham New Living Translation, it's worded this way, Nothing in creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom that we must give an account. Now you hear this famous scripture all the time that's quoted, and we're going to do that after a while, but not right now. But I'm going to read it to you in Joshua 24, 15. This is certainly directed towards us, especially as men, as leaders of our homes, biblically, supposed to be. He said, if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. Yeah. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites, which represents the world and Egypt, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. I pray by the end of today's message that you'll make a commitment as a man that you're going to serve your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and nothing else Compared to that, nothing else matters but that first in your life and that everyone else follows suit. Amen? Amen. Qualities of a good character that a man would use. You'll find that look in 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. There again in the King James, verse 13, 1 Peter, chapter 1. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, hope to the end, for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, be you holy in all manner of conversation, which means lifestyle. Because it is written, be you holy, for I am holy. So one of the first qualities that we'll discuss today that God expects from a man that God uses is holiness. And you and I cannot be holy on our own without Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. That's why it's called a Holy Spirit that he places in you when you accept him as Lord and Savior. And here's another way to look at this scripture. Again, from the Billy Graham New Living Translation, verse 13. So think clearly and exercise self-control. 
Look forward to the special blessings that will come to you at the return of Jesus Christ. Now, <clears throat> it's easy to say that we need self-control and read the scripture about self-control as men. But Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, you see where the God is addressing the evil that's already happened. And he said, the thoughts of man are evil continually. The men may not like to admit this in here today, but every one of us has already had thoughts that we shouldn't have as a man. Amen? Amen. Not a single one of us has gone without having a thought that we should not have today. And you're going to have more as the day goes on. He said, the thoughts of men are evil continually. We continually have to get ourselves guarded and under the direction of the Holy Spirit itself or we would absolutely run wild as men and young men. He said, be, be you holy for I am holy. He set our example. Jesus Christ lived a life 33 plus years and never sinned, never had one sinful thought. He is our example. Let me help you with something today. I am not your example to look up to. I'm your pastor. And yes, I have a leadership position. But if you follow me, then you may fail when I do. You follow God's Son, Jesus Christ, and His example. Amen? Now that does not give me a license to do what I want to do. But I do not want you to follow me. You follow Christ. You follow Christ. If I fall, you would fall with me. God does not want that. The second thing is that man has a pure heart. The quality of a man that God can use, he has a pure heart. Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. One of the languages that's up on the sign above the cross where Christ was accused of these crimes is in Latin. The word pure in, in that passage in the Latin, it means without wax. What that means is that in those days when they sold pottery, if you had a piece of pottery that had a flaw in it, they would take wax and cover up the flaws in it that nobody would see it until you packed it home. Amen? It's concealed. It's hiding what's wrong. We have a, a lot of men in our nation. We maybe have some even in this own church body that you've got a lot of flaws that are being covered by your actions. A lot of flaws are being covered by what you say. But I'll tell you this much. God knows about your flaws and He knows about my flaws. Amen. And the scripture said that when they apply heat to that pottery that the wax would melt and reveal who you really and what you really are. Yeah. It's the same thing with me as a man. Same thing with you as a man. God knows your flaws and when the heat of relationships, when the heat of the failures in the nation begin to surround you, it, it's going to reveal your flaws and how you react or tell who you are and how you live your life. But it takes the fire of life's problems to reveal you and I are not perfect men. Yeah. Being pure in heart, it's impossible to have a heart that's of one condition, but produce fruit, produce fruit that's of another condition. Matthew 7, 20 says, For by thy fruit you shall know them. Psalm 34, 8 says, The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, save such as have a contrite spirit. What is a contrite spirit in that passage? A humble spirit, a bruised spirit, a spirit that is beat to pieces, a spirit that is oppressed. If we don't humble ourselves as men, we're, we're, we're going to watch this nation fall. We're going to watch our homes fall. I don't care how big and how strong you are, sir. Nothing compares to what the strongest man that ever walked the face of this earth. Amen. Was Jesus Christ. Yeah. He was tough. Amen. Right now. Amen. He was tough. He didn't gripe, he didn't whine. Had every little inconvenience in his life like we do as men. 
the strongest man that's ever walked the face of this earth. Don't ever forget that I said that. It's Jesus Christ. Amen. Bearing our sin to let him drop nails in his hands and his feet for what we've done, for what we've said as men and as women and young boys and young girls. That's who you need to look up to. Amen. My father, he, he's, my age was photographs of him and his, I don't know who came up with that, that name, but <coughs> back in my father's day, and by the way, Barry, I didn't say hi to you. How you doing? God bless you, man. I'm sorry. I miss you. But when he was around 70 to 75 years old, my dad would wear these white t-shirts that we call them white beater shirts. I can promise you he never beat my mama because he wouldn't have woke up. <laughs> but she took a black skill with his head during his nap, amen? <laughs> but he's so, you can see those photographs of him, Jimmy, he, his, he's so ripped. I mean, he had a six-pack, and we didn't know what a six-pack meant except something somebody drank. <laughs> At 75 years old, it just muscled up and beefed up. From quitting school at about age 11 or 12 and walking behind a team of mules. Very strong. Very strong. And my father loved me, but my strength did not come from my father spiritually. Spiritually, my father was very weak. Amen. Let me tell you something, Dad. You can exercise all you want. Your kids and your grandkids and your family need a man that's strong in the Lord. Yeah. Someday, I don't care what kind of shape you're in, you're fixing to leave this whole world. The greatest need you have, sir, is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Nothing can replace that. Amen. Amen. I watched my dad wrestle. I watched him wrestle as he left this world. I don't know why he was wrestling with him. But it broke my heart to watch the strongest man I ever knew not be able to fight off death. And you won't be able to leave us, sir. You need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. Remember what that says. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit, a humble spirit. If you want to be the kind of man that you're supposed to be, then you're going to have a broken spirit. You're going to have a humble spirit. You're going to have a crushed spirit. We ought to have one already, guys. Should we not? Over the condition of the world that our children and grandchildren are having to be raised up in. Amen? Yeah. It shouldn't just make us mad. We ought to be broken over it too. Yeah. We should be. God said he'll save that kind of man. He'll reach out to that kind of man. Another quality of a man that God uses is faithfulness to fight. To the end. I'm telling you, a fight's coming for the United States of America. You better... You, you better wake up, man. And this old pastor here better wake up. Yeah. There's a fight coming. There's some lines being drawn in the sand. They've always been there. We've just not chose to stand on the right side of them and make our voice be heard. It's time that men be heard. Yeah. Godly men. Men of the Word of God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. It's time that we do that. Faithfulness to fight to the end. 2 Timothy 4, 7 said, I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I have kept the faith. Kept the faith. First Samuel chapter 17. I want you to turn there. Please turn there in your Bible. <coughs> Let me go ahead and tell you. It's already 12 o'clock. If you're worried about that, God help you because I'm not. Amen. Amen. Right. One of these days, Satan's wristwatch is going to come down off that wall. Amen. There you go. Yep. It may be when God calls me somewhere else. Well, I like sure would like to see that thing going. I just don't want to look at it, amen. You know the story of David? Many of you are very, very familiar with King David. He was chosen the youngest of the brothers. He was fair complexion. He had a fair complexion. He wasn't very big and strong like his brothers were. God chose him to represent the nation Israel. And they came up against this Philistine. But there's something that, that you need to see about this. As the armies were lined up against each other and began, being able to threaten each other and gather together to fight the nation of Israel against the Philistines. The Philistines were gigantic men. 
The Philistines stood on the mountain on one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. Verse 3, and there was a valley between them. If you go through and read all the scriptures, it talks about how big that Goliath was. When you, when you measure out the way the scriptures say, he was nine foot nine inches tall. I've uh, never seen anybody that big before. I remember seeing Artis Gilmore. Some of you old guys remember he was an NBA player and I was a freshman in high school. I was a flat five foot and he was seven foot two. I don't think I even reached his belt buckle. Amen. I'll never forget seeing him. I thought, my gosh, there's, there's some giant people in this old world and I ain't one of them. Amen. Said he had a coat of mail. His helmet was a breast. It says in that the head of his spear weighed 15 pounds. He began to threaten the nation of Israel through the scriptures. The men of Israel began to shake in their armor. They were afraid. And Saul tried his best to get David to wear his armor. But there's something happened in verse 23 that I want to Focus on just for a minute. You see, there was a valley between them, so they were on both sides. You got this valley right here, and you got mountains on both sides. And they were yelling things at each other across the armies and making threats, and I'm going to do this to your army, and you're going to do that to my army, blah, blah, blah. But there's a statement that's made right there in verse 23 that you and I need to see. He talked with them. David had already left his carriage. There came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and he spake according to them the words, and David heard them. Does anybody get what that means? There is a place that the enemy steps over the line. He stepped over the line when he came up. There was a valley between, between them. In other words, what, what, what I believe God wants us to see, man, is that there is a place that... We need to rise up because the enemy has already stepped over the line where he doesn't belong. As he attacks us as men and he attacks our nation and he attacks our children through all of these school bills and all this political mess that's going on, let me tell you something. Satan has crossed the line. The devil has crossed the line. We need to stand up, men. Amen. Amen. We need to stand up and fight and fight to the end of 2 Timothy Four, seven. Paul said, I fought a, a good fight. It's time that we stand up. What did David do? He didn't, he didn't use the armor that Saul wanted to provide for him. He took what he was familiar with and he already took care of a lion and a bear with his sling and five stones. And he hit Goliath right between the eyes and took Goliath's sword away from him and cut his head off. Amen. And many of you heard this story. I have to, I have to tell it again because it happened to me. I remember when I was just a, little, just a little guy, maybe about nine years old, maybe about ten, and we used to play street hockey in front of my house. We'd ride bicycles and we had sticks. Mama's broom or whatever we could swap and rake the house. And we would, we'd hit, hit some cans going back and forth. And we'd ride back and forth on our bicycles. I'll never forget this one great big guy come out of the neighborhood there. I won't mention his name because Jimmy knows him. What's school with him? He was about 13 or 14, so the first thing he did is guess who was the smallest one of the bunch? He knocked me plumb off my bicycle on the ground, and I thought, I could do two things. I can run and I can throw. Amen? I picked me up a rock, and I thought, you know what? I'm David temporarily today. And I ran back and I hit him right between the eyes, and he fell if you hit him with a hammer. I'm proud of that. And I thought, how long am I going to be safe? So I went running straight in the house. <laughs> Amen? So just a few minutes later, some other lady comes knocking on my mama's door. And my mom, that porch was hers. She was like a dog in his pen. That porch was hers. The, the back porch, you're okay. You come to the front door, you're either a politician or nobody that she knows. <coughs> this lady knocks on the door, and I'm looking behind mom's dress. <laughs> And she got little Junior there with her. His head bandaged like he'd been shot. <laughs> Amen. But Mom ran her off the porch. She was my defender. She was my defender. Your kids, man, need to be able to hide behind you. 
difference of stuff happening right now in our nation. And you've got to, as a man, tell them, son, this is not right. Right. This is not right. There's an enemy that's <coughs> picking on your children. There's an enemy that wants you to know that there's no difference. And I get this. There's no difference in the sexes, men. Do y'all get that? You might get that. You seen the new thing that's come down for the Air Force Academy? Has anybody seen that? I told them about it in Sunday school. They are not to refer to their mom as their mom or their dad as their dad because that would distinguish that there's a difference in the sexes. Amen? God help us. We shouldn't be shocked by that. We shouldn't be shocked by that. We just are numb to it. We've heard it so much and we just keep accepting it. Dad, I don't know what to tell you to do. With all these things that are happening with your children, I think it's healthy. The public schools are healthy, but I don't know how many are going to end up being, being a, a, a homeschool someday. I don't want. If God ever was to bless me with grandkids, I don't want my granddaughter to feel like she has to welcome some boy in her restroom because there's no difference in the sexes. Amen. Did anybody get that? Are, are, is it, are we going to stand up to that? Amen. Or just let it go and be silent? We've been silent too long. Amen. Amen. Oh, I won't, won't happen here. God help you if you think that. It's already happening here. Pressure to accept those things is already here. Matter of fact, it's already school policy according to your governor and man. I got to move on. Nehemiah four fourteen said, "I rose up. No, excuse me. I looked and rose up, said to the nobles and the rulers and the rest of the people, Be you not afraid of them.' He's talking to." God's people. Maybe that's what we need to hear today. Be you not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible. He's great when He's on your side and terrible if, if He's not. Amen? Right. Fight for your brethren, your sons. So this has to be addressed to me. Look the way this is worded. Fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives and your houses. <coughs> yours, 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 yours. Mine and yours, men. Fight for them. And the enemy came to approach the wall that attacked God's people. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. You being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that were against us, which is contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Having spoiled principalities, powers, he made a show over them, openly triumphing over them in it. Back again to the New Living Translation. It says this, You were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature. But it was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, canceled the record of sin that was against us. How many people have noticed what that says in the scripture? Nail it to his cross. And it disarmed evil on the cross publicly. I turn back to Joshua 24 15. And I'm going to ask the men of this church. So please stand. If you consider yourself a man, please stand. Even if you're a young man. I'm going to ask you to repeat this scripture. Verse 15. We'll stop it ever coming. If it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord, 
things do you do to serve the Lord. Choose you this day. Choose you this day. Who you will serve. Who you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served. Where were the gods which your father served? On the other side of the flood. They were on the other side of the flood. Are the gods of the Amorites. Or the gods of the Amorites. In whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will, we will serve, serve the Lord. Lord. Amen. Thank you, man. The character, the man that God uses, he seeks the Lord. And he loves him. Verse 13 of Jeremiah 29 says, And you'll seek the Lord, and he said, You'll find me when you serve for me with all your heart. Let me tell you something, man. If you're leaving something out, you search for him with everything except, Hi, ah, this is one little place. This is the one thing where my heart is really at. And you're not seeking him with all your heart. You're hanging on to something without reaching out to him. And you know what? He knows that. Amen. He knows when you're holding something back away from him. He's God. The last character of the man that God uses, he has the strength to admit sin and admit that he is wrong. Years ago, I had a man's son tell me, he said, my, my father has never admitted wrong in anything. Ever. I said, how did he possibly ever get saved? Let me tell you something, man. You can't get saved if you don't admit that you're wrong. Man. Yeah. You can't be born again if you don't admit that I failed, I'm, I'm wrong as a, as a man. I've sinned. Amen. For all the sin that comes short of the glory of God. In Romans 3.23. Yeah. And as a man, you're saying, I want to get paid what's coming to me. No, you don't. Not when it comes to sin. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Listen in closing Philippians 2 5-11 Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He made himself of no reputation took on him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. He's found in fashion as a man. In other words, God came down in the person of Jesus Christ. He humbled himself and became obedient unto the death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That is the name of Jesus. Listen to this man. You're going to bow to him, and so am I. And so is every man, woman, boy, and girl here. Listen to this. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Those of us that are saved, we're still going to bow to Him. Amen? Amen? My sins have already been confessed, but I'm going to bow to Him because He's Lord. Amen. Of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Did, did you know that, that Christ even told Satan himself that you will bow to me someday? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Satan, ain't, Satan, listen to me. Satan ain't in charge of nothing. Yeah. Amen. He's going to spend eternity in this place called hell, and it's going to be cast into the lake of fire. He won't be in charge of hell. He's not in charge of hell now. He just thinks a whole lot of things. Amen. His job is to tempt us men, to keep us silent, to keep us quiet. But God sent His only begotten Son to die for us by the name of Jesus Christ. Paid our sin death. Resurrected the third day. Let me encourage you in something today, men. Let's stand like we did earlier today. Let's stand for God. Amen. Let's stand for His Word. And if you don't know Him today, your strength, sir, will not get you into heaven. Your kindness will not get you into heaven. Your mercy will not get you into heaven. Your riches, all the things you bought your children and grandchildren, will not give you a seat, give you a home in heaven. It's whether or not you have humbled yourself 
Confess your sins and ask Christ in your heart for you. Amen. Do you know what he said? If we'll confess our sins, he's faithful just to forgive us. He can't turn you down, sir. Now, I, I don't know what, what man here might, might need Christ today. You came in here not really sure that you were saved. You can be sure the Bible said. You may know the Bible says in 1 John 5 that you may know that you have eternal life. If that's you today, sir, come on the first verse. Quit, quit relying on your strength. Quit listening to the devil. Come and ask Christ in your heart to be saved. And maybe there's a man here today this message has let you know that you need to stand for your family. Did you know a pastor friend told me the other day that he gets more, he gets more result. He sees more things happening from the women than he does the men. Did you know there are some there are some women that will not let their man be the man of God in that house, but she wants to be the man and the woman. Amen. God called you out, sir. God called me out. And I'm not proud of it, but for the first 30 something years, my wife was a spiritual leader in my home. And one day God said, Hey, hey, big boy, I'm putting a call on your life. And you better step up and be the man of God. You've been following her leadership. You know what? He forgave me. Amen. And my wife has chose to follow me as I follow God. Anybody get that? She's chose to follow me as I follow God. Amen. She even chose to be go and join into a church family that she didn't really know a whole lot about. Stepped away from some beliefs that she had. I don't, know what, I don't know what God wants to accomplish through this. I know I've shared what God had me say. If you're a man, you need to come pray for your family and pray for strength to help them lift you up, rise you up to be the man of God. If God wants you to be, you come. I promise you, he will listen to you. He'll hear you. And he'll strengthen you. You come. Do what God tells you to do. The invitation will be so now. You want to say, you're going to make this your church home? You come and tell us. We'll present you before this congregation. Our church not only has open door, but it has open hearts. Amen. 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 You come if you have a need today. Number one hundred. The challenge is a man coming. Come to the altar and talk to God about your about your walk with him.